So to preface this video, I've lived in Vietnam for about a year, and there's something really special about this culture that grabs me. Whether it's the rich culinary history behind their street food scene, or their explosive sense of entrepreneurship, there's something special about this place. Now that being said, having lived here for a year, I've picked up on some things that you might want to know. So without further ado, here are seven things not to do in Vietnam. Let's get into it. Number one, don't stop while crossing the street. Now traffic in Vietnam, especially the big cities, is absolutely insane. And it's hard to wrap your head around visiting for the first time. Now you'll notice that when a lot of people cross the street, they don't falter. They set a course and they walk it. And that's because the way that traffic works in Vietnam, it's the motorbikes or the car's responsibility to accommodate you into their flow. So you'll notice that you can cross almost anywhere in the street and the motorbikes will kind of flow around you like a school of fish. They're anticipating you continuing on the line that you're on and they plan accordingly. So don't stop at random points. Number two, don't use taxis. Now that's because everyone in Vietnam uses a service called Grab to get around, which is the exact same thing as Uber. But the best part is that in Vietnam, they have motorbike grabs, which means if you're by yourself, it is by far the easiest way to get around. Now I'm trying out the uh, Uber, uh, Uber Moto option for Saigon, which I have to say is both the fastest, the cheapest, and the most fun way to get around the city. This will always be the best way to get around. Number three, don't be afraid to haggle. Now, there are so many street markets in Vietnam that it's impossible not to find yourself in one at some point during your trip, even if on accident. And the important thing to remember if you want to buy something here is that every price is negotiable and they tend to strike a hard bargain, especially if you go to tourist markets like Ben Than Market in Saigon. You don't want to pay the tourist price. Number four, and this might be the most important one, don't skip street food. The street food in Vietnam is the most insane food I've ever had, both in diversity, quality, flavor, it really has it all. And there are so many amazing dishes to try, and of course, all of it is safe to eat. And one thing I'd say about street food in Vietnam is try to find some of the lesser known dishes that they sell in the street. Everyone knows about pho, but if you heard of ban seo, which is a crispy crepe filled with pork, shrimp, or bean sprouts cut into little discs, that's the stuff you want to look out for. Number five, don't confuse currencies. Now the Vietnamese currency is called dong, which still makes me laugh every time because I have the sense of humor of a 12 year old. And the denominations are huge. <laughs> oh God, I swear I didn't do that on purpose. For example, one US dollar is the equivalent of about 23 to 24,000 dong, with the denominations going all the way up to 500,000. Now because of this, the currency can be kind of confusing with so many zeros after it. So make sure to double check what you're handing a vendor and make sure you're giving them 20,000 and not 200,000. Number six, don't book online. Now this is surprising for people who travel a lot because as a general rule, it's almost always cheaper to book online and more expensive in person. But for whatever reason in Vietnam, it's the opposite of that. If you go to book a hostel or a hotel in person, the price will always be significantly cheaper than if you booked online. And this applies to everything, not just lodging, renting motorbikes, going on tours, stuff like that. So keep it in mind when you travel there. Last but not least, number seven, don't be afraid talking to locals. Now the language can be pretty daunting and you'll find it's hard to communicate with the locals, but that does not mean that you shouldn't interact with them. And even if you just learn one word like cheers, which is yo, it'll go a long way. They're such a fun, friendly, and open people that the language barrier doesn't really apply here. And I guarantee your trip will be much better if you do. So guys, that was it. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out more of my things not to do videos, you can click on the links on screen now. And than that, hope you guys have a great day.